The stigmas around therapy and those who seek it have been largely broken down over the past few decades, and the concept of seeking mental health assistance has become all but widely accepted as normal and healthy behavior. This is only a good thing, as the soft boundaries thrown in the way of people looking for help in the form of potential shame or outcast from their peers was always based on misguided or outright false information. To put it simply, therapy is good. Now, some people's lives are relatively easy and carefree compared to those going through constant hardship, whether due to a home situation, financial state, medical condition, all of the above. However, just because someone may have it harder than you doesn't mean you should have to suffer. Life is never straightforward. Everyone's minds, bodies, and stories are different in billions of ways, both big and small, and there's no shame in seeking guidance. However, there is usually an associated cost. Due to people being under or outright uninsured, or simply not having easy access to trained professionals who will do more good than harm, therapy can be a tricky service to acquire. Even for people like me, who are fortunate enough to have insurance who covers the majority of the upfront cost of therapy, and an LGBTQ-friendly counselor to talk to, obstacles still find ways to present themselves. In my case, it's a matter of scheduling, I can usually only get in to see my therapist about once a month. So even with professional help for depression and the like, I still have to look for ways to bridge the gap. Day-to-day -day patchwork to help soothe my soul, I suppose. A lot of people find their outlet through problematic solutions, such as overeating, alcohol, drug abuse, uh, I've been guilty of a few of those in the past. However, there are some more cost-effective and positive pick-me-ups which may or may not work for you. Exercise, journaling, drawing, all are positive examples of potentially serotonin-boosting activities. This isn't to say that if you can't get therapy, exercise is a fine replacement. Obviously not. Nothing beats getting the proper help. But as opposed to taking no action to help boost one's mood, even something incredibly basic is a superior alternative. Enter video games, a relatively cheap and accessible activity given that computers and phones are nowadays powerful enough to supply large swaths of the population with a massive backlog of time-passing fun. It's fairly commonly accepted that video games at their core started as a way for people to have simple time-passing fun. A system of entertainment, if you will. Arcades served as excellent places for people looking to kill time in fun and exciting ways. Of course, as the years have gone by, the definition of what makes a video game good has expanded from simply is fun and drains quarters. I can think of plenty of video games these days that are beloved by countless people, not for being simply fun per se, rather offering some kind of experience. Be it thought-provoking, perspective-changing, educational, or simply serene, there is certainly a point to games which I'd struggle to describe as, well, fun. But not everything that's healthy is fun, and that's okay. Sometimes pills are tough to swallow, but you're better off doing so in the end. As I've gotten older, I've found that a game which makes me feel inspired, emotional, and at peace will stick with me far longer than one that's simply a good time. Of course, there's nothing wrong with mindless fun in the right situation, and distraction can prove a useful tool in dealing with hardship. However, I believe that video games have the power to provide gentle mental health relief to players. And you know who else thinks so? Scientific researchers. Specialized literal therapy video games have been developed for use in more clinical scenarios, and research has shown these games to prove comparable in effectiveness to traditional therapy sessions. Of course, this is all still a work in progress. SciShow Psych has an excellent video about these custom therapy games, linked above and below. I would highly recommend checking it out. However, what I'm focusing on are not these limited access games, rather on common market, easily attainable products. Games you can download download and start playing right now provided you have access to a computer or console. I think there are plenty of readily available video games which have the capacity to help those in need. I'd like to re-emphasize, not as a replacement for professional treatment, but an alternative to nothingness. So today, let's look at some games which may bring you, or someone you know who's looking for support, some peace of mind. Journey. Likely one of the first games that comes to mind in the Zen games category, Journey has you take the reins of a red hooded figure in a vast desert full of torn ribbons and ribbon creatures, which can be brought to life by chiming at them. Controls are simple 3D platforming, with gliding becoming possible through collectible sigils of light. The more collectibles you attain, the longer you can fly. 
While the destination is a distant mountain topped with a column of light, as the name would imply, the journey is what counts. Trudging through barren wastelands and ruins of former kingdoms, underground caverns, and frozen hilltops. There's not much in the way of combat or spoken narrative to speak of, you're simply walking and gliding through the world while listening to ambient music. Journey is a game to be experienced. The landscapes are as striking as they are wide, and traversing them will take patience and time. It's a game of serenity, of isolation or cooperation, depending on if you can still find players on the uh, servers. While it's not a game that requires much in the way of platforming skill to complete, you may still find similar comfort through watching a long play of Journey if you'd prefer. The sights and sounds are what really drives the therapeutic value of this game up. At its core, a very basic platforming and collectible game. But with its music, atmosphere, and pace flowing like sand in an hourglass, Journey is an excellent way to find a few hours worth of tranquility in an otherwise chaotic day. Rhyme. In a similar vein to Journey, Rhyme is a 3D platformer with no dialogue or traditional combat, instead thriving in simplistic platforming and puzzles contained within an eye-opening landscape. The atmosphere is designed to incite tranquility without ignoring potential for conflict. While comparisons to Journey were rampant upon this game's release, and there is a similarity in presentation, the gameplay focuses more on puzzles than exploration. Still, plenty of side collectibles reward those who stray from the beaten path. Frankly, I've already said my piece on this wonderful little adventure in a video all its own, a link to that is above and below. A lot of what makes Rhyme such a treasure to me as a therapeutic experience is its dealings with trauma and grief. Fair trigger warnings for the sounds of dogs barking, as well as some more spoilery things mentioned in the description. Overall, another calming game with low stakes, a game with no dialogue but plenty to say, and it may help you deal with overcoming grief if the genre is too your liking. Enough puzzle platformers, however, let's move on to some different styles. Stardew Valley. This one is likely not a surprise to anyone who's played it. Inspired by titles like Harvest Moon and Animal Crossing, Stardew Valley is what I'd consider the pinnacle of 50-50 farming dating sim games. Your late grandfather has willed you land in the peaceful Pelican Town, where you'll make a living growing crops, fishing, mining, and making friends with the locals. In order to afford upgrades for your farm, you'll need to make money by selling off crops and other valuables. Use the money to build better infrastructure and customize your land as you please, so on and so forth. The end game of Stardew Valley is what you make of it, such as how automated and profitable you can get your farm, how many monsters you've slain in the depths of the mines, or falling in love, getting married, and having kids. While loose goals guide you through the game's many activities, generally speaking, you're free to do as you please at your own pace. And yes, the entire game is on a time-based system, cycling day and night seasons and special yearly events, but the timer is by no means as stress-inducing as one may expect. There's no hunger or thirst meters to concern yourself with, the worst that can really happen by taking your sweet time is your crops drying out, which can easily be replaced. It's easy to get lost in the kind embrace of Pelican Town, as Stardew is very much a game designed to sink hours and hours a day into. If you're not someone who has that kind of time, you may find the title difficult to get into. However, if you're looking for forgiving busy work to occupy your mind, Stardew Valley is the peak of its genre. Slime Rancher. While Stardew Valley may be the best ranching and farming game I've ever played, Slime Rancher has the unique feature of being a first-person shooter at the same time. You hoover up slimes of all shapes, colors, and sizes, and house and feed them to harvest their plorts. Much like Stardew, you sell your bounty for profit to buy upgrades for your farm, but also yourself. And it goes further than that. Complex and dangerous terrains full of large enemy slimes are brimming with treasure, lore, and mystery. The game is as much about exploring and innovating as it is farming, and automation allows for both to be accomplished without too much trouble. And once again, the time limits imposed upon to you by the needs of feeding your slimes in the day-night cycle are incredibly forgiving. Your slimes won't starve to death, merely stop producing plorts and attempt to escape if left unattended to. And you do have a life limit, but you'll simply respawn back at your home upon death. A cutesy take on an FPS with a focus on creating and cultivating life over destroying it makes Slime Branch an excellent way to scratch both a farming and shooty game itch at the same time. 
Minecraft. I feel like I don't have to spend a lot of time on this one. Most of you watching have likely at least heard of Minecraft, if not played it yourself. Whether in survival or creative, the goal of Minecraft is entirely up to you. Loosely, however, your mission is simply build. Make something impressive or functional or just downright interesting. Battle against zombies and skeletons who threaten the villages and vast biomes you live upon. Mine for ores used to craft better tools to reach new dimensions, to gather more supplies, blah blah blah. It's, it, it's Minecraft. A game which is as common as you want to make it. Difficulty settings include an enemy removed peaceful mode to calm the action as much as one needs to craft their perfect world. You get the idea. It's, it's Minecraft. I have countless thousands of hours in this one for good reason, because there's always a new idea for something beautiful to build. A place where you make the rules, build the environments, and control the stakes is a place I can spend endless time in, and admiring your handiwork after the fact is a satisfaction unlike any other. Shenmue. This one is a bit of a wild card, I'll admit, but this game is very near to my heart. Recently, I had fallen under some hard times, mentally unhealthy as it were, and I was looking for a long title to immerse myself in. The slow-paced, relatively realistic worlds of Shenmue proved a perfect place to spend time when I needed to get away. Content warning for the start of the game, however, as the main event that kicks off the series is the death of the protagonist Ryo's father. From here on out, he's determined to find the truth of his murder, asking around his small Japanese town for any information he can find, and battling his way Virtua Fighter style through hordes of goons. If you've ever played the Yakuza series, think of Shenmue as a much tamer and earlier version of a similar idea. Loads of minigames and small details to occupy your ample time. Hours of mundane daily life tasks, minigames, and 9-to-5 jobs. When the first Shenmue game originally released, the series was praised for its attention to detail, and even all these years later, the scope of the series still remains far larger than it has any right to be. Across the three games in the series, you'll travel to Hong Kong and all over China in search of information, with lots to do everywhere you go. The main reason I'm including this franchise, despite its dated presentation, is its simplistic realism. Sometimes I don't want to overthink what I'm playing, sometimes I just want to wander around Japan and feed a cat, talk to interesting NPCs and learn what their story is, practice kung fu at the dojo, Job, arm wrestle, play darts. There's a near endless supply of minor wonders throughout the world this series creates. The controls are a bit janky compared to what you may be used to in modern releases, but the heart of this series, in my opinion, more than makes up for it. If you're looking for a somewhat realistic, albeit simple, martial arts adventure full of memorable characters and endless side content, Shenmue may offer a retreat from your stresses. A Short Hike. A relatively more recent release and one I've played in a previous video, this cute indie gem has you playing as Claire, a bird on a vacation on a relatively vast island in search of a peak high enough to attain cell service. In order to climb and fly higher, you'll need to locate golden feathers scattered around the map. Along the way, you'll meet lots of people with different going-ons, artists searching for their muse, kids coming up with new games to play on the beach, you'll find flowers in need of watering, buried treasure, fish to catch. I feel as though this mentality rings true through most games which I'm considering therapeutic. It's about the journey, not the destination. As the name implies, the hike to the top of the mountain really is a short one, but you'll be spending so much time learning stories, playing minigames, and collecting trinkets, you may forget what you even first set out for, and that's okay, you're not punished for taking your time. Slipping and falling down the mountain deals no damage and will instead land you into some new, interesting sub-stories, someone else to help, lives to improve just by being there. A short hike reminds the player that the quickest path often isn't the most memorable. Stop and smell the roses and be rewarded with an even easier trip when you finally decide to reach that highest peak. Speaking of... Celeste. This indie platformer proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that a game doesn't have to be easy to be relaxing. You play as Madeline, facing off against screen-by-screen -screen challenges which invite you to jump, dash, and wall climb past spikes and pits in a deeply difficult ascent up a sacred mountain. Along the way, you'll meet a cast of curious characters, all of whom are facing their own demons just as you're facing your own. Celeste leans more towards the literal definition of therapy games. Not only are you up against platforming 
extreme extremes, but also mental health complications which come to light in beautiful and disturbed imagery and story beats. If you're like me, you may even learn a thing or two about dealing with panic attacks simply by playing this title. Obviously, the gameplay may not be for you. While the truest struggle lies in collecting optional strawberries for bonus points as well as advanced difficulty levels dubbed B-sides, even simply completing the levels to their barest minimum will require platforming prowess. However, Celeste takes a kinder approach to these intense degrees of difficulty. It never goes out of its way to insult or provoke the player into a rage. Coupled with infinite lives and per-screen checkpointing, death has little consequence. There's still a deep sense of accomplishment in surpassing the obstacles presented to you, don't get me wrong. That said, if you're more interested in experiencing the story and the character Celeste has to offer, watching a playthrough may prove a superior alternative to those not looking to potentially frustrate themselves. A fine balance has to be struck when making a calming experience out of an inherently rage-inducing genre, yet Celeste, using music, visuals, and narrative depth, gracefully finds that sweet spot. Kind words, the most literal interpretation of a therapy game I have to offer, I'd consider it a stretch to even call it a game, more like an app where you can vent your frustrations, concerns, or general anxieties anonymously, and receive advice from crowds of others playing the title. While listening to lo-fi bops, you can browse others' anonymous letters and offer advice to anyone you think you may be able to help. It's a game all about talking in short form, and people letting each other know you aren't alone. No one is. Everybody deserves the chance to be listened to, no matter what barriers are in their way. Kind Words lets you get your voice out there, and it's not not just for your own benefit, for the boon of others in need as well. It helps everyone who plays it and is the absolute best therapy a video game can provide, in my opinion. And that's all the titles I have to offer. Obviously, this list is not definitive and everyone is different. There are many games I didn't list simply because I've never played them. Animal Crossing, for instance, is a perfect game to get lost and help drown out your troubles. I simply haven't gotten around to it yet. No Man's Sky also may prove a good one if you're willing to deal with the nagging survival meters and combat. There's hundreds of games out there that may do the trick for finding the recuperation you've been looking for. In fact, there's an entire Twitter account dedicated to these so-called wholesome games which I discovered in the process of making this video, I'll link that below. I'd also like to ask for your input. What kinds of games offer a therapeutic, calming experience for you? If a game helped you through troubled times in particular, I and I'm sure many others would love to hear about it in the comments below. That'll be it from me. Take care of yourself for you, your family and your friends' sakes. Thank you all so much for being here, and take it easy.